Hello everyone, it's George from Ireland. Here I am in Tbilisi, the capital of the Republic of Georgia, on the Rustaveli Avenue, one of the main streets. So it's a bit of a walk through Georgian history. There you, there you can see uh, the Treasury Museum across the street, which I might take a look at later on. Some bookstalls, rather bereft of books, but it's fairly early in morning, which is why not a lot of people are here. Now it's a pity that there's this park in the city centre and you can't go into it. It's guarded by some ferocious hounds. Garden of the First Republic of Georgia, it's called, because obviously um, Georgia's part of the Russian Empire for about a century up until 1918, and then there was the October Revolution in, uh, in Russia, and the Bolsheviks seized power, and they said that any of the non-Russian peoples who wished to proclaim independence would be permitted to do so. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin became chairman of the uh, uh, whatever the Council of People's Commissars, effectively Prime Minister, he said he hoped that the ethnic minorities like the Georgians, Kazakhs, Finns and so forth would remain in a um, voluntary and honourable union as he put it, but if they wished to declare independence that their wish would be respected. Um, but anyway, the Georgians lost little time in doing so, so the October Revolution, it's 7th of November according to our um, uh, Gregorian calendar and as you can see here in May 1918, the Georgian Democratic Republic was proclaimed. So Georgians wanted independence. Um, but there's a large minority of people in Georgia who were not ethnically Georgian. And Tbilisi was an ethnically, mostly an uh, Armenian city. Um, right, and uh, then there are obviously indigenous ethnic minorities, Mingrelians, Ossetians, Abkhazians, and so forth. And uh, people lived, mingled together. Obviously, there's a large number of Russians living down here. There's some Azerbaijanis and so forth. Um, anyway, so uh, independence it was. And they were fairly successful at that. But obviously, there was chaos because the First World War was just ending. You see this with their old parliament building. Um, and uh, so, the, so some Georgians joined the Ottoman army in the First World War, the so-called Georgian Legion, because the Ottomans said, well, if we win the war, we will grant independence to Georgia. Meanwhile, the, the Armenian genocide was going on. Um, but anyway, the two sides managed to get together. Those who've been on, on the Russian side, those who've been on the Ottoman side in the, in the First World War. Of course, because the Ottoman Empire was so close, it, Georgia borders Turkey, that was relevant. Germany is very far away. Um, but uh, anyway, there were some prominent Bolsheviks who are from here, not least Yosef Vissarionovich Djugashvili, better known as Stalin, and um, uh, Sergo Orjonikidze, and um, eventually Lavrenti Beria, but he actually started out in Azerbaijan, it belonged to the, I think, the Musavat party. Um, so I was going to say that across the road, I just found this out yesterday from our guide, that's where Edvard Shevardnadze used to live, um, and he was um, president of Georgia from about 1994 till about 2004, the Rose Revolution forced him out, and he was at the Soviet um, foreign minister in the late 1980s. His granddaughter, um, she was a presenter for RT, as in Russia today. And our guy told us that his surname, Shevardnadze, the Shevardnad, is, is derived from this the Georgian word for falcon. Um, anyway, he died just a few years ago, a Soviet old timer. Um, okay, so then in 1921, the Russian Civil War was coming to an end, and the Bolsheviks decided to invade Georgia. They're going to make it part of uh, their new um, Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. The, because the Soviet Union, as such, didn't exist until 1922. It's December 1922, it's proclaimed on the stage of the Bolshoi Theatre. And initially they created the Transcaucasian um, Soviet Socialist Republic, which was Azerbaijan, Armenia and Georgia together. So in about 1936 they separated the three, and Stalin drew the boundaries to try and make the dissolution of the Soviet Union impossible by mixing people together. By the way, this is Government House, which is their parliament. And then you can see up there in the middle, I wish I could zoom in from here, with my finger above, above there, um, where they, they used to have the hammer and sickle in Soviet times, which has been removed. And you can just about see the, the outline of the hammer and sickle. You can see the ears of corn, there's a cornucopia around that. Um, so that was built in 1936 um, uh, there, on the site of a former Alexander Nevsky Russian Orthodox Church. So, um, yeah, the, the, the Bolsheviks invaded, they defeated independent Georgia, those who weren't executed when they surrendered were sent to slave labor in Siberia. Very few of them survived. So Stalin, despite being Georgian, was not kind to his own 
uh, ethnic group and the Russia, the, the Georgian Orthodox Church was almost entirely shut down and that was the real repository of the Georgian language and Georgian culture. Obviously the Russian became the prestige language, everyone had to learn that. You could learn Georgian in schools as well but um, the, uh, the better ones turned to, tended to learn Russian and obviously had much greater opportunities if you mastered the Russian tongue. But they did spread literacy so it was incredibly violently oppressive Bolshevik rule and now they call it a Soviet occupation overlooking the uncomfortable fact that there were some Georgians well at the very top of the whole Soviet system and very much in favor of belonging to the Soviet Union saying that the idea of independence was bourgeois nationalism and that uh, the Bolsheviks were going to liberate the proletariat and the peasantry um, uh, what else about Rustavelli Avenue well Stalin died in 1953 and then a few years later well there was the so-called secret speech in 1956, just over three years after Stalin died, Nikita Khrushchev by then was the supremo as the general secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. It's a very long-winded title, so just uh, general secretary for short. He's not president, not prime minister. But anyway, he gave a speech in which he denounced uh, the, the wrongdoings of, um, of, of Stalin, put all the blame on him. That's a school over there, by the way. I wonder it was a very illustrious one to be so central. I saw the children coming out there yesterday afternoon. And um, some, some Bolsheviks, not Bolsheviks, <laughs> um, Georgians were affronted by this because um, they had great national pride that one of their own had risen to the top of the tree. And uh, they said that Khrushchev had made sarcastic remarks about him. So there was a, a big demonstration here, the 9th of April demonstration. And uh, the Soviet police and army surrounded it and they opened fire, about 22 people were killed. Um, so uh, that is um, in, in, in March 1956. So it's commemorated by a plaque which I'm about to show you. It was also the 9th of April incident, 1989, which happened on this same street, and again, which the police shot dead about 22 unarmed demonstrators. So, um, where is the plaque? Actually, it's better if I show you from this angle here. You see the plaque above my head saying, Here, the Soviet police. The monument commemorates the participants of a peaceful rally gunned down by the Soviet regime on March 9th, 1956. Okay, and so we go on down Rustavelli Avenue. Um, yeah, so there have been a lot of reforms in the 1980s in the Soviet Union. Perestroika as in restructuring. People allowed free speech. Other political parties were unbanned. And then nationalist movements started in the various Union republics demanding independence and Georgia was no exception so um, and there was a, a demonstration here in 1989 and the police didn't know how to handle um, public meetings and their response was just to use violence but nobody could possibly say anything remotely critical of government no one can be independent minded and if they do if they chant something or hold a placard we're gonna kill them so they so they did and that's the 9th of April it said 1989 but well, the whole situation unraveled and Georgia declared its independence towards the end of uh, 1991, just after that failed August coup, a last-ditch attempt by communist uh, reactionaries to, to um, oust Mikhail Sergeyevich Gorbachev and, and maintain the Soviet system, both communism and the unity of the USSR. But they failed and it really backfired because it triggered a wave of declarations of independence. Up at that point, yes, the... Um, the Baltic republics wanted to go independent, but it was far from clear that the others were. And I remember the people saying that, okay, although communism will go, the Soviet Union will largely remain together. The Baltics are an exception, but certainly Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, they will stay together. And indeed, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, who was the first secretary of the Kazakh Communist Party, effectively ruler of Kazakhstan, he, um, uh, he campaigned against independence from Kazakhstan, but eventually led his country to independence. Um, all right, so uh, Zviad Gamsakhurdia was a renowned dissident writer who was in prison in the 1970s for um, anti-Soviet agitation and conditions in prison were very harsh indeed. So he's a very gallant campaigner for his cause um, uh, because he, he got everything from the state and if you fell out with the authorities that was a real headache to get a place to live, to get enough food, access to medical treatment, anything. And of course he had no idea that 1991 Georgia would become independent again and it happened. There was a Georgian government in exile and all this time, some of them fled in 1921 and indeed the parents of Salome Zorabashvili, the president of Georgia, they were amongst those who fled. 
via Turkey eventually to France, with a significant Georgian community though, that was kept going. Um, anyway, so Sviatikam Sakhudia became president, the first uh, 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 first president of, of modern Georgia. The civil war broke out. Russia back the other side, um, and eventually uh, Edvard Shevardnadze came back, someone who'd been uh, an old communist old timer. Zviad Gamsakhurdia died in, in uh, uh, mysterious circumstances. Did he commit suicide or was he murdered? Anyway, he's buried in their hero cemetery, halfway up the mountain there. Um, yeah, so and Abkhazia and, and South Ossetia broke away, of course, with Russia's help. Um, so he ruled on Shevardnadze in 2004 with massive demonstrations. The bloodless Rose Revolution toppled him and Mikhail Saakashvili came to office. Saakashvili had a reach out to her just as the Soviet Union was breaking up. He'd gone to university in Kiev, surprisingly, where he learned Ukrainian. Though there's no need to, because it was all taught in Russian. He later married a Dutch woman. He's the master of several languages, including English. And he came back, really oriented towards the country towards the West, and he rooted out corruption, which was endemic up at that point, and a defalcation. He increased police salary tenfold, because the police were just notorious at this point for shaking people down, because the salaries were just unlivable. Such a paltry pay packet that they considered it their right to extort bribes, even done nothing wrong, because anyway to survive. So he did improve things a lot. He even sent Georgian troops to help the United States in Iraq. Uh, but anyway, he was out some years later. It was that 2008 war where Russia invaded, uh, which just went on for about five days. But of course, as, as, as though, uh, as though um, they would start a war, the uh, Georgians were outnumbered about 50 to one. So anyway, he's, he's overthrown. There's come over the new guys, Irakli, Gubashvili. Irakli is actually derived from he Heracles, or Heraklion, you know, the Greek name. Anyway, so I hope you're learning a little bit about Georgia and seeing these Tsarist era buildings, just a few stories high, because before they had lifts. They look so very fine, I think you'll agree. And look at this one. Is this arabesque, sort of Ot Ottoman style? It's almost the kind of thing you see in Spain or something or North Africa. All right. So that's enough from Rustaveli Avenue. I could go on. It's kind of annoying and noisy with all these, um, with all the traffic going by. But yeah, I'll just show you some of the sort of souvenirs they're selling here. Right. So socks, slippers, dolls, Georgian flag, Orthodox images, horns, drinking horns, stuff like that. These plates pipes, national dress, t-shirts, baseball caps. That's enough. Okay, so thank you for watching. Please um, subscribe on Patreon, donate on PayPal. Goodbye from Tbilisi everyone and toodaloo.